Hi everyone, Elliot here. Um, I created this video to help break down some of the intuition behind backpropagation. So models like ChatGPT, GPT-4, the recent Claude 3, uh, the, the Claude Sonnet 3.5 model, all of these, um, this is how they learn under the hood. They use backpropagation. They feed some some text through the network, and then they, um, in the, in the output, they say how close were we to the expected result, and then they backpropagate through it, and they update all of these weights or or their or their gradients rather, uh, and then they do gradient descent, and then the network gets you know a little bit better, like maybe zero point one percent or something better uh, each iteration. Um, and this is this is essentially what I'm going to be breaking down. So we're going to use this whiteboard here. Maybe some examples on the screen, uh, but by the end of this, you should understand how this thing works under the hood at the level of scalars and tensors. As a quick note, uh, I made this mainly because I couldn't quite conceptualize backprop completely with Carpathy's micrograd lectures or Three Blue on Brown's lecture on YouTube, uh, not because they weren't well explained, but more so because it didn't abstract things up to the level of tensors. So it's very easy to cover something like the calculus behind it um, and some of the simple operations like a neuron. Um, but when you abstract it up to tensors that are like two, three, four dimensions, it starts to get really hard to understand what, how things are flowing under the hood. Um, you know, when you're designing neural network architectures, you have to know how these, how these gradients are flowing, right? You have to understand sort of under the hood, how is, how is this thing being optimized? So when you jump up in terms of dimensionality and size, it helps when you can, uh, you know, understand at the level of tensors. So that's also what this uh, attempts to do. So I have a Discord server where you can come in and ask questions, chat with the community. Link for that will be in the description. Let's pop over to the whiteboard here. Uh, just to illustrate, from the very beginning, you have a neural network composed of a bunch of knobs or neurons or whatever, whatever you want to think of them, if you will. Um, I'm going to draw out just a, a simple diagram to illustrate this. So you have maybe an image, right? An image X. That's a terrible X. Um, and you pass this through a network. Um, and then you get an output. And then you find a loss, right? So you do this, you do this forward pass through the network, you get your loss, and then you backward and you you update all of the weights inside of the network, all these little parameters, these little knobs, and you fix them and you you up you 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 optimize them and then the model does better. So let's actually go in a little bit deeper and see like what is this? So think about think about X, some maybe some image, right? Maybe it's maybe we're trying to predict if uh, an image is a picture of a hot dog or it's not a hot dog. So if it's a one, hot dog. Zero, not a hot dog. And what we do is we pass the image through, pass the image through the network, we get an output, and say the output is like, oh, we, we pass in an image, uh, and it is a hot dog, and it says, oh, I think it's a 40% chance, or 0 0.4, that it's a hot dog, right? That's a lot of error. 40% is, is really far off, right? We don't want that. So we find, we, we use this loss function to essentially calculate the difference or the error there. Uh, and this loss function will grow as that error increases. So if it's like 0 0.1 and 1, then that loss function is going to be massive. Whereas if, if it's like 0 0.99 and 1, it's going to be like, ah, you should update a little bit, but you're, you're, you're kind of okay. Um, that's what the loss is going to do. And then we use this loss. Let's say the loss is, um, let's say the loss is like, we, we just say the loss is big. This means that uh, we're going to have to, you know, traverse this network, and all of the uh, all the gradients are going to be amplified. So these little these these things called gradients, or you can think of them as as the knobs in the network, but they're going to be actually be bigger and amped up because we have such a big error, right? So that means there's going to be a lot of adjustment at first. The neural network's going to do a lot of fast, fast moving and fast adjustments. Then it's going to slowly, con well, it's going to quickly converge through random movement. It's going to figure out which ones are the best one to move and how much. Um, and you're going to see this loss, you know, if this is time and then this is loss, it's going to drop. Okay, so it's going to be little, maybe a little randomness figuring stuff out and then it's going to 
and then it's going to kind of plateau and it's going to slowly decrease. Um, that is this thing right here. This is called a gradient descent. So you're essentially just optimizing these little gradient values in the network and making it better. So now that we understand on a, on a high level, like what the network is doing, um, let's go into like what it looks like on a, on a more technical level. So up here, you'll see I have a, uh, a neuron. So you have some, uh, we're, we're not going to use an image for this instance because uh, images are a little hard to work with, but uh, say we just have four X's, right? And we're, we're, we're entering these X's in like arrow, 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 and arrow. And this, this is like X1 all the way to X4. Um, and then we have a little neuron. So they're going to all connect like this. You're going to have all, all four X's. I say you might have another neuron down here and another down here, but we're just going to worry about this one for now. Um, all that's going to happen is you're going to have your, your X1 multiply the um, W1. So it's a way it's going to be structured like, uh, like this. W1, W2, W3, and W4, right? Um, and it's essentially just going to dot product with the, uh, the input. So X1 all the way to X4. So what I mean by dot product is each of these are just going to multiply. So W1 times X1, W2 times X2, W3 times X3, and etc. And they're all just that those are going to add together. So it ends up looking like it ends up looking like this. You have, you know, all these weights, they multiply, um, they multiply with an X value, and then they add together. And that gives you your output. So it's this single scalar value, that's the output of this neuron, right. Um, and then typically, after you get that output, you might pass it through something like a like an activation function, an activation just essentially is like a nonlinear change in the output. So, um, for example, you could use like sine, it goes like this, or you could use 10 H, which is more common. 10 H is like a squashing function like this. So it'll plateau out at one and plateau out at negative one. So it's, it just squashes it. So it's like a nice, a nice one between one and negative one. Uh, and then you have like sigmoid, which is going to squash between one and one and zero doesn't look like an S. Um, between one and uh, zero. So you have a bunch of these activation functions, right? And so what'll happen is you'll you'll pass, uh, you'll, you'll get an output of a neuron. These will these will dot product together. And you'll get this output and you'll pass it through, say, uh, NH, which is uh, this guy here. So that's that's like on a low level how these individual neurons work. Okay, so x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2 plus x3 times w3 plus uh, x4 times w4 is equal to y. But that's that's a neuron. Pretty simple, right? Uh, it's just adding multiplies. So how do you how do you abstract this up to the level of tensors, right? You might you might ask. And I can actually answer that fairly simply. So let's just take, I, I already drew this out preemptively, so it makes it kind of easy to go faster. Uh, take this as an example. You have inputs x1, x2, x3, 1, 2, and 3. Um, and then you have a weight matrix, right? So this is a, this is a vector, right? It's like one dimensional, it has, it has like a line of numbers. And then this is 2D, so it's a matrix. So it's a matrix vector multiplication. So how this goes is you're essentially just doing the same dot product thing, but you're adding more dimensions to your to your uh, number structure, I guess you could say. Um, so what you're going to do is you have this first uh, you have this first neuron that has to interact with all the inputs. So what you do is you take the is you multiply these together, and how you do that is you take you know this 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 vector first, and then this uh, matrix, and you take that this um, w1, uh, 
W11, W12, and W13. That's like the first the first neuron. And you, you rotate it. This is how you multiply um, vectors and matrices. Is you take this and you rotate it. So you flip it this way. And then you do your iterative dot product. Um, and that will give you your Y output. So notice how we do uh, this one, this one times this one, this one times this, and then this and this. And this is all written out here. So that will give you your Y1. And then these will go and interact with these. This will flip over and interact with the X values. Y2 for now. Um, and the way we know this works is just because of shapes. So this is something you learn in your linear algebra class. A lot of this is like assumed knowledge, of course. Um, but all you have to make sure, and this is extremely simple. You look at the inner numbers. This is a, a this is a one, one by three horizontal, and then this is a, a three by two horizontal. And you look at your inner numbers. So you have a three and three. Those are the same checkbox. And you look at these other two, these outer ones. You have a one and two. And that means you're going to get an outer shape of one by two. So as long as these match up, these, um, these inner ones, your output shape is going to be the outer ones, so one and two. And we'll notice that we get precisely that. So it's not, it's not two by one, so like y1, y2, it's it's one by two, so it's horizontal. So y1, y2, uh, horizontally. And uh, that's that's pretty much the uh, multilayer perceptron. So this 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 thing you were talking about before, this this neuron, you essentially take this up to the level of uh, like many, many neurons, meaning like, you know, maybe billions if you have really big networks. Um, and you just you just uh, you have your you have your neurons and a nonlinearity like tan h and then another bunch of neurons and then tan h neurons tan h uh, and you just go and you just make a really deep network that way. So it it'll essentially look like this. You have your inputs and maybe like this. And you can think of each of these as just these little, these uh, these like weight columns. Right? That, that's that's essentially all they are. Um, so you might ask, how do you how do you back propagate? You understand how to go through. You understand how to go forward through this network. So how do you actually back propagate through it? Well, I drew some stuff to help us illustrate what's going on and to make my job a little easier when when writing things out. But um, when you're back propagating through the network. You essentially have to start with the last node. So you know you have an X, you have a net, and then you have Y, and then you go to the loss, right? So this is where you start from. You start from the loss. Um, let's say our loss function is like MSE loss, right? This that's what this is right here. So you take you know your your uh, predicted and your expected. Um, and then you you square that you square that difference, and then you add those together, and then you 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 divide by the number of uh, results that there are. So it's essentially like a, you 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 do a you do a subtract, you square, uh, and then you average. Right, that's what MSE loss is. And so the derivative of that, um, let's say if I have like two elements, it's going to be you know. 1 over 2, and then you sum all these together that are squared, and then the, the power rule from calculus, if you if you remember this, this 2 will actually go here, and you'll end up with just this. You'll end up with just this part. So if, you know, if, if uh, my predicted was like, um, you know, 1.0 and my expected was like 0 0.4, then it's going to be like 0 0.6 is the derivative of the loss, and you would have that as your first node 0 0.6 and then you would distribute that accordingly so if you got um if you had like two neurons say um i don't know like like two numbers and say they and, and say they added to make this so they did like a i don't know like a plus or something like an add operation um you just jump back to uh differentiation and calculus right so for example, if I'm doing multiplying, like y equals 2x, 
the derivative of that is going to be two. Uh, the rate of change is two, right? So it's like the slope is two. So I just write the slope as like a function, and that's constant, right? So it, it changes it changes there. But if you're just doing um, if you're just if you're just doing like add, right? Like no, there's no there's nothing to really differentiate there. There's no rate of change because it's constant. So this zero point six will just flow to both of these. There's no multiplicative action happening there. It'll just flow. Uh, and then you can go right to back propagation. And it's really important to cover this part because um, you know you have to start with that. You have to start with the loss. You say, what are we starting? What is like the first node of this back matrix? And then you go and you do your matrix multiplication math, right? Or your or vector matrix, matrix vector multiplication. That's what this is. And PyTorch is really, really fast at doing this, like blazingly fast. Um, there's like billions of dollars that go into research as to how uh, matrix multiplication can be optimized under the hood on different GPUs. And they, the matrix sees that they are multiplying. They don't look like this. They're massive. Like <laughs> they have like millions of numbers in them. So it's nothing that you can store in your brain, but a computer can store it on chip uh, and it can, it can just compute these really fast. Right. Um, and that, that, that's like, the, the GPT architecture in chat GPT um, and like a lot of the a lot of the operations in it like attention and the the multilayer perceptron like a lot of it is matrix multiplication so they purposely optimize for that um, and that's why so much money has gone into this algorithm and making it faster on hardware uh, is because it literally makes the coolest tools in the world uh, faster right so that's a little bit of background on the whole matrix multiplication thing. Um, you might hear the word matmul. That's just short for matrix multiplication. That's what that's what nerds that, that, that's essentially nerd speak for just like making this algorithm faster. You, you you'll see it everywhere. The matmul, search it up. Um, but going back to back, so you get these zero point six values, and you can think of these as the gradients for your output or your maybe your second last nodes, right? So you have like a you have a data attribute, which is like as you're going forward through it, you you eventually get this you get these data outputs and then you feed them into the loss function. Um, but when you're going backwards through it, the point is to compute all the, the derivatives, the local uh, the local gradients of all of these different nodes, right? And you traverse this backward because this one is going to rely on the previous layer's gradients in order to make it work, right? Um, and this is just a thing from chain rule and calculus. If you recollect that, um, I'll show you a, a really good video, uh, after this part for recollecting a lot of this stuff and, and, and un understanding it intuitively. This video is more so just to, you know, say that this matrix multi uh, matrix multiplication is fast and that this is how you can do it, um, without, you know, <laughs> without getting too confused. Um, and then you, you have this data attribute, so it's going forward and then you have the you have the grad attribute going backward, and that's what we're computing here. So you have these you have these zero point six values, and see these are gradients, right? So what you can then do is you can say, okay, I need to figure out how much I need to update those weights. I need to figure out how much I need to update the last layers, you know, whatever weights, whatever you want to call them. Um, and in order to do this you're going to need both these these output gradients as well as the inputs so the x dot data attribute right the forward the forward part i mean the inputs you don't really need uh gradients for those at, by the time you get to the end but you you do it you do it because you need to compute all of these um you need to you need to traverse backwards so that's why you compute these these input gradients um so for some context, it's just the same thing as this, except you're flipping some things around. So what you're going to do is literally just, I say here, dot product, the transpose of X and Y. So you have your Y gradient, say it's, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll just use these shapes for instance. So if we jump back to here, we have this Y1 and Y2 computed from this, which we covered earlier. Um, and you have these, this, this horizontal thing of X, right? It's these horizontal X numbers. Um, and so what you do is, is you just transpose these. And what that means is 
if you had like a like say a two by uh if you had a two by three matrix the transpose of that the dot t would be a, a three by two so if i have like a, a thing that i populate with zeros um let's say it's this is going to be like a three by two three three high two long zero 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 the transpose of this transpose is going to be zero 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 so you're just you're you're, you're just flipping these so instead of instead of x1 x2 x3 you have x1 x2 x3 and it keeps that it keeps that order those index the, the index the index order um and so you essentially just you just multiply these so you have a um you have a three by one and you have a one by two so you end up getting as an output um you know these match up and these are going to be your output so you get a three by two output um and remember going back to this our uh weight matrix populated with all these all these weight dot data this is also shape three by two so what you can do is you can say okay i have these gradients now i have i have pretty much how these um how these weights are affecting the final output the amount of error that they're that they're getting so you can take this you can You take the, um, you take the dot data attributes, and you you multi, uh, you you essentially subtract or or change them or even add. It depends depends how you look at it. You could just do like subtract zero point one uh, of the of the grad attribute. The grad is how much error it's doing. If you just subtract like all the error, it's gonna it's gonna change in a massive amount. So if you only adjust it a little bit and you do it over a lot of iterations, meaning like hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions, um, you'll just you'll just end up in a really optimal spot, right? So I have these weights and I update them. I update them based on each um I, I update them based on their error. And then they just improve a little bit. This is, this is literally what gradient descent is. So when I when I was talking about earlier, and you had like your, your loss and then your time over over it over uh, training steps, this would drop right, and then it would plateau out. So this gradient descent part is literally just that. You have like you have your data. Let's say it's I don't know A B C. E, e F and you subtract by 0 0.1 let's say like maybe we'll get like these are different numbers say two 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 and then maybe this is like you're getting mass errors these are all like four 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 so 0 0.1 times all of these is going to give you 0 0.4 for each for each of these numbers, and then you're just going to element wise um, subtract. So it's going to all these are just going to give you zero. Or it's going to give you 1.6 right, for each of, for each of these values, uh, and your weight matrix is going to be updated because of that. So literally all back all the all the forward pass is is you just you have your input x you do uh you do you know, essentially y equals x um x times w and then you can optimally add a bias in there too bias is like a, just a common term you use in this uh, in this like essentially group this linear layer if you will it's just an extra thing that you add on and it it can it can provide benefits um actually bias will make language models more expressive because it'll lean more a certain way right so uh, bias is a cool term but that's besides the point you do this uh, matrix multiplication or matrix vector, matrix vector multiplication uh, to go forward and then when you're doing backward you just transpose the x you you do the you do the flipping on it you go 
um, from one, two, three to one, two, three, uh, and then you 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 multiply that. Uh, you you do a matrix multiplication with that, the transpose x and the y gradients, and that will give you your um, your your weight gradients. And then you do this part, gradient descent. Um, so that's that's pretty much how back propagation works on the hood on the level of tensors. Of course, you can abstract it to the level of batches. So you, you, you can, right now I'm just working with two dimensions, so like three by two, right? But what you can do is you can make these, instead of just a single, like a, like a window pane, you can make it 3D so it's a cube, and each of those panes are going to be a batch. And so what you can do is on, on, on these GPUs we have, these NVIDIA GPUs you can run models really, really fast on, is you can, uh, you can you actually have so many cores that you can you actually can run a model more efficiently if you use batches. If I just pass in these these small window panes, um, it's only going to be able to use a certain amount of the cores, right? Whereas if I do it on the level of batches, it can use all the cores and it can capture more information about the data that's being passed through. If there's like more error or there's or there's more to the story, I guess. If there's more more to the story across more samples of data, um, you can actually learn more and you can you can optimize better at that level. Um, it's also just like the parallel architecture of GPUs that allows you to just have massive throughput like that. So that that's a side story. I love ranting about that stuff, but uh, I'll just showcase a little bit of. Uh, some other videos that you can watch, some other videos that I found extremely useful, but didn't quite go to the level of uh, matrices, tensors, and, and, and batch processing and all that stuff. So here it is. So here's uh, Andre Karpathy's lecture. He, he did some work at Tesla and OpenAI. He's a really smart guy. He, did, he has a whole lecture series on this stuff. I highly suggest you watch his channel. Uh, he, he does really good content, one of the best I've seen. Um, and a lot of what I covered today uh, on the whiteboard here, he actually covers in code uh, and he does everything from scratch and does that whole, you know, backwards traversal thing, but without doing matrix multiplications, he does it on a, on a more scalar level. So that's, that's was kind of the point of this is if you missed the whole point there and how to abstract it to matrices and tensors, it's like, this is, this is the whole point of this video. Um, but he does an extremely good job. He does two hours and 30 minutes of it. Um, so neurons, um, bugs, 10H, right? So that's, that's, that's pretty much it. And then I know three blue, one brown has some stuff as well. Three blue, one brown. So what is back propagation really doing? He has some good videos on this. Um, so yeah. Hopefully you found that useful. So before I leave, there's actually two other things I wanted to cover. So one I actually completely missed during this whole part was the activation functions and differentiating those. So th this is an extremely simple part. Um, I left this out probably because I thought it was too easy and trivial, but pretty much all this is, is saying like you have an activation function like 10H like this, uh, and you find the derivative of that function and you use that in backpropagation. So if I have a matrix, like a, like say, a, I don't know, two, 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 and this is like my output, I'm gonna have that. Or maybe, maybe even like, we'll just say like Y. So Y1 and Y2, right? Y1 and Y2. And maybe we'll say these are like, I won't even give them names. The point is you find the derivative of 10H. Um, and you can just you can just pass these through that. Um, you can you can just pass these through the derivative of 10h, and you'll just get the next node from that, right? So that's that's a little something I thought I should add because uh, these activations or nonlinearities, because it's it's like a curve, um, these are absolutely essential in backprop. And then the last one, um, if I just if I just zoom out here again, to uh, to here. This is something worth looking into. High Torch Autograd. So 
This is a little bit more complicated to read, but based on the background I've given you, the Andre Carpathi lectures, as well as Three Blue and Brown, and the content I've covered here today, um, this shouldn't be too hard to read. So, uh, you know, gradient descent, I talked about this, differentiation and autograd, uh, just recollection of calculus, um, and then the computational graph. So you have all these different nodes like power backward or mole backward or sub backward, all, all these. Um, and it pretty much just goes into the details behind that. You can, you know, there's introduction to autograd, fundamentals of autograd. Um, so they have a, they have a, a YouTube video on that. And there's just some more, more stuff they talk about. This one is especially good. Um, I'm going to put this one in the description actually, because of how good it is. Um, they, they go in quite good depth into how Autograd works under the hood in uh, a framework like PyTorch. You might be familiar with PyTorch. It's a, it's essentially how, how um, companies like OpenAI do really fast AI research. Um, they, they write their neural networks, they write their data loaders and whatever else and all their hyperparameters and optimize those. And they just experiment rapidly. Uh, PyTorch runs extremely fast on GPUs. It has a bunch of tools. Um, you know, I don't even know all the tools PyTorch has yet because it's so expansive. Um, but I, yeah, I rec highly recommend looking through this. They go through steps in code and, and they, they give you the outputs. And it's, it's very intuitive to look through this. So, um, that's it.